Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Today, let's use the Raspberry Pi as a multi-channel MIDI looper so you can control all your hardware synthesizers while performing a jam session on them. Here we go. Oh, and this is advanced stuff, so I guess if you don't know how to uh, set up a Raspberry Pi yet, there are some other videos I'd suggest you would watch and I'll link them down in the video's description. And now, let's go. Okay, so let's take a look at today's setup. We've got the Raspberry Pi here in the middle, which will act as the MIDI looper. Then we've got the motor synth and the knot drum, um, which is connected to the Pi with a USB to 5-pin standard MIDI interface. We've got the Yamaha Reface DX, which will mainly act as a keyboard and also as a sound source. And then we've got the Korg Nano Control, which I'll use for controlling the sequencer or the MIDI looper. Okay, so let's start by installing the software. And in preparation for this video, I did take a look at a lot of Linux apps. For example, Freewheeling, which you can see on the screen right now. But this is an audio looper, and today we're looking for a MIDI looper, right? And also there's an on-screen keyboard named Mamba, which kind of has a MIDI looper, but I found it rather cumbersome for live looping. Uh, but if you're interested, you can take a look at this. The URL should be on screen right now. So the program I found most usable is called MIDI Shell. Or MIDI -shell. <laughs> and um, yeah, let's install that. So the first thing we want to do is to uh, install the dependency packages. So this program needs the read line libraries and the also sound libraries. So let's install them first. Uh, this is easily done by uh, opening a terminal and then typing sudo apt get install libreadline dev and libasound to dev. And then just hit the enter key. And there you go. If you haven't installed this previously, the output of that command will be a bit longer. And maybe you have to type yes one or two times. So depends on how your Raspberry Pi was set up in the first place, okay? Okay, so now the dependencies are installed. Let's download and install the software. So press wget and then the address of the source code and then wait until it's downloaded. And now let's unzip this. And then untar it. All right, so now we should be able just to configure this. Okay, and now let's make this and wait until it's compiled. Okay, that went rather smoothly, and now let's just try sudo make install. Alright, and now you can just type midi shell or midish and then enter, and you should see a command prompt displaying a timer. Okay, so we've got a sequencer running, but at the moment this app doesn't know about the MIDI devices, so let's change that. So press or enter exit and then enter the command asec dump minus L. And this will show you a list of the MIDI devices and please take a look at the numbers here on the left. Um, you can see we've got a MIDI interface, we've got the nano control, the reface DX and the motor synth. And what you need to do now is to memorize these numbers. Perhaps open another command window here and put this on the left. And now we need to edit a configuration file for our sequencer. And this is called MIDI Shell RC. So let's enter this. And now you can see there are some commands here. And DNU is an abbreviation for new device. So we have uh, at the moment 0, 1 and 2. 0 is the MIDI USB interface, then we have the nano control, which is at the moment missing from here, so let's add it. So device new 3 and then 28 colon 0 and read and write or read only. 
and uh, then we have uh, the Reface DX and the Motor Synth on 36. So okay, now we got all the important MIDI devices covered. Now you can just save this file and then go back to the sequencer. Okay, and the next step now is to turn off local mode if your master keyboard also happens to be a tone generator in your performance. Otherwise, if you play a note, mm. it will ring out twice because it will be routed to the Raspberry Pi and then routed back to your keyboard. For example, on the Reface DX, press the function button and then turn off local mode and now if you push the keyboard, you won't hear any notes uh, coming from that unless the sequencer is turned on. In order to record music, you must first create a MIDI track and then create a MIDI filter, which takes your incoming MIDI data and, for example, routes it to one of your MIDI devices. And that's what we're going to do next. Okay, MIDI Shell is a fully featured sequencer based on the shell commands, which is quite impressive, but also quite complicated. So yeah, let's go back there. I'll just show you the most important command you'll need to get your loop going. So. The first thing you need to do, of course, is to create a new MIDI track. So let's do that by typing TMU and then the track name, and I'll use the Reface DX first, so I'll call this track RDX. And um, now we need to tell the sequencer uh, what to do with uh, the, the incoming data. And in this case, any notes we play just need to be sent back directly to the Reface DX. So, what we need to do here is to create a new filter and the command for that is f new and then once again the name let's call also rdx and now we need to tell the filter what to do with the data that's uh, coming in so the command for that is f map and now you need a curly bracket and then any data coming in should be sent from the first device on the first uh, MIDI track to any MIDI data on the first device and its first MIDI track. The reason I'm typing a zero there instead of a um, one is because uh, this sequencer counts from zero beginning, like any programming language. So this is the first MIDI track and 15 is the last MIDI track. And the device number, uh, remember we set up um, this uh, configuration file and we defined um, the MIDI device 32 as device number 1 in our sequencer. And if you look up the 32, you see it's the Reface DX here, okay? Right. So now um, the filter is done and the um, next thing um, which is convenient for you um, is to set up metronome. So the command for that is M on. So now the metronome is turned on. And also I want this metronome to play on my NOT drum. So now let's look up in the configuration file again. Um, the NOT drum is connected to the USB MIDI interface on 24. And 24 is device number 0. So let's go back in there and uh, set up a metronome. The command is metro cf. And now you can define the notes the metronome should play. And there's always the first beat and the three other beats. And the first beat is a little bit lower and louder. So let's um, tell the computer do, to do so. So metro CF and then non. And then on the first device and its first MIDI channel, it should play the note number 28 with a volume of 127, which is the loudest possible volume. And the other three notes should play on the first device and its first MIDI channel. Another number, number 29, at a slightly lower volume. All right, that's it. Short message in between, making videos like this one does take some time. And if you like these videos and want to support what I'm doing here, you can do so in multiple ways. For example, you can just subscribe to my channel, which is totally free. 
or you can go to my Gumroad page, uh, gumroad.com slash Floyd Steinberg and buy one of my sample packs or sound sets. Or you can just share these videos and tell other people about it. Or maybe go to my Bandcamp page, floydsteinberg.bandcamp.com and buy some of my music there. Whatever you do, it's highly appreciated. Thank you. Now we need to set up a loop, so just type in loop. And we also need to define the length of the loop. That is done by typing cell 8. So now our yeah, loop is 8 bars or 8 measures long. If you want it longer, you can also type select 16 or anything else. But for this example, we'll stick with 8 bars of music. All right now, you can press R for record. And once you hit the enter key, the sequencer will start playing the metronome and you can start your loop. Okay, one thing I forgot to show you is to set the tempo of the track. That is done by typing T and then a space and then the tempo you want. So for example, 110 beats per minute for my example. All right, let's go on. Okay, and one more thing is how to save your track. So let's do that. It's very simple. Just type in save and then the file name. Uh, and uh, then press enter. So um, if you want to load that again, just type load and then the file name and enter. All right. Okay, after cutting this video I realized I should have explained how to add another track and I'm doing that now. So let's take a look at the screen once more. Um, we've recorded the Reface DX and um, now we'll add another track with a Nord drum. So let's type T new Nord. So we got a new track and now let's select the track by typing CT Nord. Now we need to create another input output filter. So let's type uh, F new Nord. And now let's select that filter. Select filter, or choose filter Nord. And now once again, um, we need to uh, direct incoming MIDI data from our master keyboard to the um, sound module. So uh, yeah, let's use that mapping uh, command once again. It's fmap and now take a look at our device list here. The Nord drum is on the, the USB MIDI interface, which is device number 24 and in MIDI shell it's device zero. So We'll route any incoming traffic from the Reface DX, which is on device 2 today, um, to the Nord Drum, which is device 0 on its first channel. Okay, so now the looper is up and running and it's quite stable and reliable, but that's only one part of the equation because you don't want to memorize all those commands and use them in the live performance. That would be impossible. So what we want to do is to map those commands to a MIDI device so you can just press some buttons to start the loop, change tracks, start recording, stop recording and all the things you want to do while looping. So here's how to do that. Okay, so we do that with a tool called XDO tool. So first we need to install that. So type sudo apt get install XDO tool. So perhaps you have to answer some questions with yes once again. And once that is installed, now let's take a look at which MIDI devices are installed and then search for the one which is your MIDI controller to control the sequencer. So once again, type asac-l 
and then take a look at this here. This is the Nano Control and it's on MIDI device 28. So once again, take that information and type ASAC done, this time minus P, and then in colons, um, the number of that device. Now, if you push a button on your nano control, for example, I push the play button now, then you will see it will give you a list of information on this key press, for example, on which channel it happened, which controller number it was, and the value. And I will repeat this and press the stop button now, and also the record button. And now we can press Ctrl C on the computer keyboard and uh, we can write a small script now. Okay, so we've installed XDO2. Now let's configure this uh, to work for us. And um, I've created a text file here with, which is called XDO2 MIDI shell bash. And um, yeah, remember how we determined um, the controller numbers for key presses previously? Now all you need to do is uh, to copy the script here. And um, I'll show, explain what's going on here in short words. Um, this will catch the output of this um, dump here and then read what's going on. So for example, if you press um, the play button, um, this ASAC dump program will print this line onto the screen. So it's 28 control change on channel seven, controller 41, value 127. Now um, you tell this script to read this prompt and uh, to read the source, event one, event two, channel, label, and so on. And then um, you just extract the data you need and tell it to react by using the XDO tool and then type P for play and then type return for the enter key. And that's it. And should um, the control change 42 um, occur, then we will type S for stop. And otherwise, uh, if we hit the record key, it's control change 45, then we need to type R onto the screen and press return. Now um, let's save the script. Okay, and now we can close this. And let's go back to our MIDI um, shell program here. Let's exit. And now we want to change the file um, properties of our bash script. So we can execute it. So it's change mod UGO plus X, then XDO tool MIDI bash. And now you can just um, execute this by typing its name and um, uh, posting an ampersand in the end of your line. So this means it will run in the background. All right, so now it's listening to events on our nano control here. Now we can go back to MIDI shell. And now, see, I press the play button on the nano control the sequencer starts playing. Yeah, and now you can figure out how to use all the other controls for important stuff, for example, switching channels, adjusting loudness, adjusting the tempo and so on. And um, yeah, you're lucky because I already created such a script. You can just download that. Um, link is in this video's description and um, adjust it to your uh, given hardware setup. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so much for today. Here's a short demo.
All right, last thing to do is to make your Pi boot all these uh, components automatically when you switch it on. So this is easily done. Just edit your profile, uh, which is located in your home directory by typing uh, the lines you see on screen right now. And then go to the very end of this file and then just add the lines shown on screen right now. This tells uh, your shell to automatically uh, load these um, yeah, components and then you're good to go. You can use this Pi without a screen. Yeah, and that's it for today. I hope you found this interesting and useful. And if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching. See you again very, very soon. Bye-bye.